So the word that we came up with, limit creep feeding, other people use that word too. I wish we would have came up with a different one, but here's a group of calves that we're getting ready to wean them. We're probably 90 to 100 days out, and we use this concept where we feed very small amounts of feed in a cow excluded area, a creep area, and we generally feed around a quarter of a pound to a half a pound a day, so very small amounts, but it's highly concentrated in trace minerals. So we're trying to feed those calves to get trace minerals into them before they're weaned. Now there's other things that happen that we never expected, but they, they have value. I don't know how much value, but they have some value. One is you're exposing the calves to concentrated feed. Well, all creep fed calves get that exposure, right? And there's gotta be some value there. But the other thing is you're teaching that calf to associate concentrated feeds, palatable feeds with humans, and there's something there. When we first started this, we uh, put our calves into the research feedlot and we found that, boy, the calves that had this limit creep, even though it was a quarter of a pound a day, virtually nothing, you know, that's, uh, uh, what, 200, 250 grams a day. But when we put them into that weaning facility and we would go feed them, they would come up to the bunk because they associated people with something to eat. And so just that exposure there probably, probably confounds the value that we find. But when we feed these mineral concentrated uh, uh, feeds to the calves, they don't eat them. Now that's a big problem, isn't it? We have all kinds of variation on the amounts that they will eat. And, and if you didn't know this already, calves are very finicky when it comes to consuming new feedstuffs. Very finicky. There's nothing wrong with the feed. In fact, the refusals that we take away from the calf and, and give to the cull cows or throw into the bull pastures, they eat it fine, no problem. But, but it's something about these mineral concentrated feeds that they wouldn't eat. And so you can see here in this slide, when we have calves that uh, are consuming a, 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 a feed with no added mineral, they eat it just fine. It takes them some time, a few weeks, until they get up to the targeted amount, but no problem. But if we concentrate it with minerals, they don't eat it. And we have some year-to-year -year variation, but if you give them an opportunity to pick a, a creep supplement with or without mineral, they'll always pick the one without mineral. And we don't know why. But we believe the reason is that the mineral is creating a metallic taste in their mouth. It's highly soluble. If any of you ever had aluminum foil in your mouth by accident, have you ever put copper sulfate on your tongue? That, that, that very offensive uh, 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 metallic taste, we believe, is what's keeping those calves from consuming these diets. So we started asking that question. We decided we would look at different forms of trace minerals, and in this case, uh, copper, zinc, and manganese, which, which generally you will find uh, existing in, in, in organic products and other types of products because they're all absorbed and metabolized in their divalent form. So I wanted to go over the different forms with you very briefly. The sulfate and oxide forms like, like manganese oxide or copper sulfate or zinc sulfate or zinc oxide, these are the inorganic forms that are mostly found in the, in the formulations that we feed today. They're very common. The, the, uh, the solubility at neutral pH is highly variable. Some are really soluble, others are lesser soluble. And the concentration of the metal in each of the in ingredient forms is highly variable. Now one that's more new is here uh, presented to us from the Micronutrients Corporation, and you'll hear me refer to these as hydroxychloride or hydroxy minerals. The trade name are IntelliBond minerals, and they differ in that they are inorganic minerals, but they form, they're formed in, in naturally occurring crystalline covalent bonds. So it's a metal to uh, covalently bound to a hydroxy group. They are uh, concentrated, but what's very interesting about them is they're very insoluble or highly insoluble at neutral pH what we typically would consider normal pH uh, 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 in the rumen, okay? Quite insoluble. Now, the other form that you're familiar with is organic trace minerals. Now, they are similar to the hydroxychlorides in that they also exist with a metal covalent bond, but in this case, that covalent bond is with a carbon-containing ligand, and it can be anything. Generally, we think of it as an amino acid or a peptide. And so you can see all of these different categories of organic trace minerals. 
Generically, in the field, producers often call them chelated trace minerals. But that's really a misnomer. Almost all chelated trace minerals are indeed organic trace minerals, but all organic trace minerals are not chelated trace minerals. Okay, so those are the forms, and I just wanted to show you one slide about absorption. It doesn't really matter what form you feed, absorption is the same, because absorption occurs with the free metal. All right? Now, each of the metal may have different carrier proteins when it passes the endothelium, the intestinal endothelium. They might have different carrier, they do have different carrier proteins, but the presentation of the free metal is the same. However, when we think about the impacts on absorption, different forms do have an impact because they might interact in the room and, and form insoluble complexes. Okay? And so that's something that you probably have heard about a lot. It's these ruminal interactions where the metal can combine with an antagonist or other types of, uh, uh, of antagonists and form these larger insoluble complexes. So the free metal is never presented at the intestinal endothelium. That's really where that bioavailability difference comes. I wanted to share that with you uh, before we get into uh, these, these studies now.